this topic, we're looking at some some internal structure, internal um, properties of systems, in particular poles and zeros. So the concept of a mode is the concept of an eigenvalue. So whenever we see the concept or the word mode or modal, it's referring to eigenvalue, eigenvalues. So first, again, we're going to re refresh our mem memories on what that similarity transformation is all about. So if we have the states in a set of coordinates, the state model x dot is equal to ax plus bu, y is equal to cx plus du, then given an, a non-singular matrix, we can change coordinates. So now I'm going to call the new coordinate z. z is equal to t times x. Because of the fact that t is non-singular, it means we're not losing any information in this process. So it's a lossless process. And so now we can also go back and solve for x. x is equal to t inverse z. And so we can go through and show then that um, z dot now is equal to just differentiating our equation. z is equal to t times x. z dot is equal to t times x dot. x dot is equal to ax plus bu. So I distribute my t through and keep, keep track of the fact that x is equal to t inverse times z. And so in this process, I end up with this new a and this new b. a is equal to tat inverse b tilde is equal to tb, and so we now have the state equation in the new coordinates. Similarly, for the output equation, we get a new c and a new d coming out. And so we have this relationship between the two, a, b, c, d, a tilde, b tilde, c tilde, d tilde. The inputs u and the outputs y are the same. Un they're unchanged through this process. So, and here are the relationships between the two different sets of coordinates. We can also go through and show that the transfer function of the system is the same in both coordinate, in either coordinates. Okay, it's the same transfer function. We can go through and show that. So this process of, of stepping through using uh, properties of matrices is instructive. So for example, here I have C, which is equal to T inverse times T, okay, uh, times C. And that is because this is an identity, and I have an identity here as well. C times T inverse is C tilde, T times B is B tilde, and then these three matrices together have the inverse given here. Okay, so you can go through and show that the inverse of this product is equal to this. Okay, so you basically reorder the, the things, the matrices, and um, invert them. So this one gets moved over here and inverted. This one gets moved over here and inverted. This one is inverted. It stays in the middle. And so that quantity inverse. I can now distribute the t and the t inverse throughout. t times t inverse times i is just leaves i. But t a t inverse, notice the t and the t inverse do not cancel because matrices do not commute in general. And so we have to leave them in this form. Okay, so, so even though it looks like the t and the t inverse should cancel, they don't cancel because matrices do not commute. So they're on the wrong sides of each other. So we end up with this matrix A tilde. And we have the same transfer function. So why do a similarity transformation? Here's some reasons. Some state model representations reveal more insight into the system than others. Some are better for computation. Some are better for analysis. This is the main reason we're going to be doing it here. Now what about modal coordinates? So again, modal, when you, when you hear the word mode, think eigenvalue. So assume now that our A is diagonalizable. That is, there is a complete set of eigenvectors. So this is the eigenvector relationship. I have a constant lambda, a vector, a non-zero vector v. Notice that if v is equal to zero, this is trivial, right? It's obvious. A times zero is equal to zero. So um, the, it's non-trivial when v is not zero. And so if you recall how v, the eigenvectors are formed, they're actually, you take lambda i, this lambda i minus a, that matrix, and you take the null space. So any eigenvector, um, any any vector in that null space is an eigenvector, and and that as a result, any multiple of this vector is also an eigenvector. And we have a full set of them. We have n eigenvectors. Okay. Therefore, there exist matrices V and capital lambda such that A V is equal to V times capital lambda, where V is the matrix of eigenvectors. Lambda is a diagonal matrix of the eigenvalues. So we have that relationship. OK. 
Okay, so this is this is the uh, the matrix uh, in um, in the diagonal form. And now, if we let t equal v inverse, we can go through and show then that our a our new a matrix is in fact just lambda. So we can put the system into what is called modal form. That is when we have it we have it in diagonal form. So what's the point of this? Well, one of the things is, is it simplifies things by decoupling states. It also allows for easy observation of important st system structural properties, makes the system simple to analyze. So these are some reasons. Properties. Well, if we have an eigenvector, an eigenvalue relationship, AVI is equal to lambda IVI, the spectral mapping theorem says that if I take a function of A times VI, that I take the function of that eigenvalue times VI. So for any analytic function, again, uh, an analytic function is a function that can be represented by a Taylor series or Maclaurin series or you know, a power series. So in particular, for us, e to the a t times v i is equal to e to the lambda t times v i. And a to the k times v i is equal to lambda i to the power k times v i. And again, this is very easy to prove. This one is particularly easy to prove. If you take this equation, right? multiply this equation on the left by an a that'll give me a squared vi is equal to lambda times a vi but a vi is equal to lambda vi so that's going to give me lambda squared times vi and so on i can keep keep doing that and show that that if i just keep multiplying by a i keep accumulating another lambda i in the process okay and it's this property that's easy that's used to prove this property, which is the Taylor, if we use the, the, the Maclaurin series for the e to the at, then, then this property comes out, uh, a repeated application of this property. So, all right, now suppose our system starts with initial condition that's an eigenvector. So remember, an eigenvector if we take that same vector and multiply by a constant, it's still an eigenvector. So this can be any any vector along the same direction as an eigenvector. So if you think of what an eigenvector is in n-dimensional space, it's like a line in n-dimensional space. It, so the eigenvector, the eigenspace associated with that eigenvalue is just a line in that space. So this is a line. If I, if I pick uh, the initial condition to be any point along that line, then if I go through and, and again for an unforced system, x of t is equal to e to the at times the initial condition. The initial condition is that eigenvector, and because the, it satisfies this eigenvalue relationship, the spectral mapping theorem, I have this. That is, x of t is remains along that same direction. Here I have a constant value times that. So, but it, it remains on that same direction. So if I start on an eigenvalue. I stay on, I'm uh, sorry, start an eigenvector, I stay on an eigenvector. Okay. Another thing that's, that's significant is that in modal coordinates, we still have eigenvectors. The new eigenvectors are, in fact, the unit basis vectors, that is, columns of the identity matrix. Okay, so we can go through and show that this relationship is satisfied for any column of the identity matrix. So that that's simple. So we have... We know what the eigenvectors are, and they're simple. All right, so in terms of a, a forced, uh, unforced system, we have this relationship. So this is our new A matrix, or, which is capital lambda. And so we, we basically have a set of equations that look like this. Zi dot is equal to lambda i zi. So notice that this means that each state is independent of the other states. That's what we mean by decoupling. They're not coupled with each other. They're, they're decoupled. So that is, they're acting independently of one another. So that that's uh, I don't have to know what's going on with the other states to know what's going on with this state. So that simplifies the analysis. So suppose now that we don't have an uh, unforced system, and suppose now we're looking at the output. My, I basically have a set of n subsystems. So notice that this subsystem is only dependent upon its own state and the input. And then the output is a, is a linear combination of all the states in the input. So in terms of a block diagram form, it looks like this. Okay, 
So I have these parallel subsystems, these little internal loops that, that are defined. And um, so in terms of analysis of systems, this is significant. If, for example, this term is zero, that means the control signal does not reach this state, is not affecting that state. So when we come back later and talk about something called controllability, what we're saying is that I cannot, through this input, control this state variable if that's zero. Okay, and so we're going to talk about something called controllability. And just by having it in this, in this uh, form, this modal coordinate form, we'll be able to analyze controllability. Similarly, for observability, what happens if one of these guys is zero? So for example, let's say this guy is zero. What does that mean? That means that the output signal it has no information coming from that state. So I cannot, I cannot see what's going on in that state by looking at the output. And so we're going to talk about something called observability that is exactly that property. And so having it in this form allows us to look at those kinds of things. So if we can't diagonalize, the Jordan form also provides useful information, but not nearly as neatly as the diagonal form. If we use eigen uh, projection method, that also does not readily reveal the hidden system structure. So really, it's the diagonal form that gives it to us. The Jordan form kind of does, but it's, it's a little more complicated. So but anyway, that's the modal form of our system. We're going to turn now to some important related property an important related property called an A invariant subspace.